Thanks to Magellan TV for sponsoring today's video. Asteroid impacts have always been a fascinating concept. Although uncommon, even today we see news articles of asteroids reaching the surface of Earth. And they make for interesting subjects of disaster movies. Why? Well, they are likely to have caused the mass extinction which wiped out 76% of all species on the planet 66 million years ago. Was this a one-off? Or could such an event happen again? And if a large asteroid was on course to strike Earth, could we prevent it and survive using current technology? I'm Alex McColgan and you're watching Astrum. Join with me today as we try to understand asteroids and how NASA is planning to defend Earth from asteroid impacts by seeing what happens when we launch spacecraft into them. Major impact events have significantly shaped Earth's history. Going back to the very early solar system, one of the biggest impacts in our history may have formed the Moon, where a planet-sized object named Thea collided with the young Earth. As time progressed, we may now have oceans full of water thanks to collisions with asteroids. And since then, asteroids have also potentially caused several mass extinctions. One of the most well-known impact events left the Chicxulub crater, which is believed to have caused the extinction of dinosaurs 66 million years ago. There is an inverse relationship between the size of an object and the frequency of such events. Small objects frequently collide with Earth, while large object collision events are very rare. And as the solar system ages, large asteroid impacts become less common. You see, when asteroids collide with something, they either fragment into smaller chunks, or they get integrated into the larger bodies, like the planets. It is estimated that Earth gains 15,000 tons per year this way from meteors entering its atmosphere. Impacts actually happen all the time on Earth, a lot more than you may think, but most are barely noticeable. Meteors, or shooting stars, are tiny objects with sizes ranging from sand grains to stones only a few centimeters across. These burn up as they enter Earth's atmosphere. So how many do you think hit Earth's atmosphere on a daily basis? The figure may surprise you. 25 million. And guess what the biggest meteor is likely to be on any given day? 40 centimeters across. The biggest one on a yearly basis is around 4 meters. And every century we get one that is at least 20 meters across. The objects that manage to survive the Earth's atmosphere and land on the surface are called meteorites. These have to be somewhat larger than normal shooting stars to survive. And most of the time, what's left of the object upon reaching Earth's surface is about the size of a brick. These objects cause large trails in the sky with spectacular colors, known as fireballs. Every 2,000 years or so, a meteor about 100 meters across hits Earth, blasting through the atmosphere, causing significant damage to the area from the impact itself, but also from the airburst associated with it. And then you have objects large enough to threaten civilizations on Earth, objects over 10 kilometers that only come around once every several million years or so. The chances of anyone alive today encountering such an event are very close to zero. One of the good things about larger objects is that they are also easier to spot, and scientists think they know of all nearby asteroids above the size of 10 kilometers with a very high degree of certainty. But smaller, less easy to spot meteors are still a big threat on a more local scale. About 1,500 people were injured in 2013 when the Chelyabinsk meteor exploded over Chelyabinsk in Russia. Around 7,200 buildings across six cities were damaged by the explosion's shockwave. Luckily, no one was fatally injured during this incident, but imagine if such a disaster were to happen in a highly populated region. Needless to say, the results would be catastrophic. This is why it is very important for us to be able to detect and prevent this before it has a chance of happening. One of the ways to do that is for us to find and track objects in space that might be a threat. And we are doing this faster and more efficiently than ever before. We've discovered over 20,000 new potentially dangerous asteroids in just the past two decades, with about 30 new discoveries added each week. Most of them have harmless orbits, but what would we do if we ever found an asteroid that was on a collision course with Earth? This is what NASA will be trying to find a solution for with its DART mission, or the Double Asteroid Redirection Test. 
DART will be visiting Didymus, a relatively large near-Earth object with a diameter of about 780 meters. It has a moon named Dimorphos, which is about 160 meters across, and it orbits Didymos from about a kilometer away. The orbit of Didymos ranges from about just one astronomical unit outside the orbit of Earth to a bit beyond the orbit of Mars, and it takes 2.1 Earth years to make an orbit around the Sun. As it orbits, the asteroid comes close to where Earth orbits, and when our orbits align, it can get pretty near. In 2003, it passed only 0.048 astronomical units from Earth, just over 7 million kilometers, which is actually when it was close enough that we could detect its small moonlet Dimorphos. Didymos spins rapidly, rotating about once every 2.26 hours, while the moonlet orbits around its parent body about once every 11.9 hours. The DART spacecraft trip to Didymos will be fairly short for space mission standards. It will launch on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket on November 24th, 2021 from the Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. It will travel a distance of 11 million kilometers and will reach Dimorphos by September 2022. DART is a very simple and low-cost spacecraft when compared to other orbiters or space missions. It's also very small, only about the size of a refrigerator, and its payload consists of a single instrument called Draco. Draco is a high-resolution imager, which will help DART with its navigation and targeting to measure the exact size and shape of the asteroid target and to help scientists determine the best impact site and to provide a geological context to it. DART will also carry the Licia Cube, a CubeSat contributed by ASI, the Italian Space Agency, as a secondary spacecraft. The Licia Cube weighs just 14 kilograms and is only about 30 centimeters long. Lichia Cube will be stowed away in the mothership during the interplanetary cruise and will be released around 10 days before the impact. It will fly by the asteroid system using an autonomous navigation system in order to witness the DART spacecraft impact Dimorphos and to acquire images and data of the target after the event. The DART spacecraft will also be running autonomously. Due to the latency between sending and receiving instructions caused by the distances between Earth and the spacecraft, DART must itself locate the moonlet, detect a perfect spot for the impact to happen, and then aim itself appropriately. This is where DART's smart nav comes in handy. This autonomous optical navigation system, and surprisingly, all this happens within only an hour before the impact. During DART's impact in 2022, the distance between Earth and the Didymus system will be near its minimum. The last time Didymos was this close to Earth was in 2003, and the next time will be in 2062. This timing allows scientists to make higher quality telescopic observations of the Didymos system after the collision. The impact itself will be magnificent, similar to the Deep Impact mission of 2005. The impacts generated will excavate a new crater and blast between 10,000 to 100,000 kilograms of asteroid surface material, called ejecta, into space. It is estimated that the impact of the 500 kg DART spacecraft at 6.6 km a second will produce a velocity change on the order of 0.4 mm. This doesn't sound like a lot, but it will lead to a small change in trajectory of the asteroid system, and over time this will lead to a large shift in its path. Not to worry though, even with large margins of variability, scientists know that even with this collision, the orbit of Didymos won't change enough to ever cross paths with Earth. But if there was an Earth-bound asteroid, this little nudge early enough in advance can impact its orbit enough to take it off a collision course. The images acquired by Draco on board DART before the kinetic impact will be streamed back to Earth in real time. In its final moments, Draco will help characterize the impact site by providing high-resolution scientific instruments of the surface of Dimorphos. Lichia Cube is equipped with two optical cameras, which will inform the microsatellite's autonomous system by finding and tracking the asteroid throughout the encounter and capture scientific data along the way. All the data produced in this phase of the mission will be fundamental in verifying the effectiveness of moving the asteroid's orbit through this method. It will also study the formation of the plume generated by the impact, in particular to characterize its structure, morphology, and evolution. HERA is a follow-up mission. 
it will provide a detailed post-impact survey that will turn this grand-scale experiment into a well-understood and repeatable planetary defense technique. HERA is ESA's contribution to this mission. It is due to launch in 2024, and it will reach the Didymus system by 2026. And upon reaching the asteroid, it will perform high-resolution visual, laser, and radio science mapping of the moonlet to build detailed maps of its surface and its interior structure. Because even with the most powerful telescopes, Didymos and Dimorphos still appear no more than a single point of light from Earth. Scientists will try and measure the brightness of that point of light over and over again, building up a plot of the light curve and looking for changes in brightness when the impact happens. However, this technique by itself is not very effective in measuring the change that DART's impact caused to the asteroid's orbit. What ESA is trying to do with the HERA mission is perform its own crash scene investigation of the Moon's impact crater and surrounding surface in greater detail. The data collected will put into numbers exactly how much of an impact we can have on an Earth-bound asteroid should the need ever arise. So there we have it, almost everything you could want to know about the DART mission and what our best hopes are at diverting potentially dangerous asteroids away from Earth. Another reason scientists want to learn about asteroids is because they might have other uses for humanity in the future too. Companies are already setting their sights on mining asteroids due to them being rich in various metals. On Magellan TV, there is a really well put together documentary called Asteroid Mining, the New El Dorado, where it explores the prospects of mining asteroids, the reason why this may end up being preferred to mining on Earth, and how far away we are from seeing this become a reality. Magellan TV is a subscription streaming service which you can use on pretty much any device, focused on the best science documentaries out there. Magellan TV has a special offer on right now, where you can buy a year's worth of membership and get another annual membership for free, potentially a good gift for someone you know that enjoys documentaries. So if you like the sounds of asteroid mining the new El Dorado, or want access to Magellan TV's offer, click the link in the description below. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing and liking it. It helps a lot with the algorithm. Also, thanks to my patrons and members for their support too. If that's something you would be interested in, check the links in the description. All the best and see you next time.